mollusks. I'm allergic to mollusks. You're allergic to mollusks? No, I really am. Really? Oh my god. I mean, I'm not allergic to mollusks. Like to eating them? I'm actually not allergic to mollusks. I'm okay. allergic to shellfish. I can eat mollusks. Okay. Like, uh, like, you, like mollusks. you could eat squid or you could eat scallops, clams. Yes. So what are mollusks? Well, they're, they're usually soft-bodied organisms like this uh, snail. Their body is soft. A lot of them create a shell. Are you filming this? Yep. Oh, that's good, right? By the way, it's chapter 19. Too good. A lot of them can create a shell. That shell there was created by this thing. The organisms have an outer covering called a mantle that can squirt out a shell and secrete the shell that hardens. And then they can hide in the shell. But when that thing dies, what, guess what happens to the shell? It remains. And will float down and become part of the bottom of the ocean and will eventually break up into little pieces and become part of the sand and can become part of the... Uh, calcium carbonate <coughs> material that makes up a lot of the sand on the bottom of the ocean. Y'all remember studying that stuff? Uh, of course. Now, sometimes the shells wash up on shore and you see them on the beach all over the place. That's from dead uh, mollusks. A lot of things will eat mollusks and will not eat the shell. Um, scallops? are uh, bivalves, they have two shells. Gastropods, like snails, have a single shell, while scallops, uh, other bivalves, like oysters and mussels and clams and scallops, they have two shells. That's why it's called bivalve, two. They actually have two valves, so they suck in water and then get rid of water through. Um, and most of them are filter feeders. And then you have your cephalopods, like the squid, um, a lot of these don't even have a shell. They've lost their shell through evolution. So how would you survive without a shell? Your your skin gets strong. You gotta be. You can have tough skin. You can be fast. You can be smart. You can camouflage yourself. Squids can do all that. <coughs> they do have pretty tough skin. They do. You can have tough skin, and you can. And some of them have ink and poison, and there's all sorts of things they've evolved. And they're real smart, too. What's the difference between their ink and their ink? Between what? Their ink and their ink. Uh, I'm not sure what they make normal ink out of, in, like in pens. But Do they only call it ink because it looks like ink? They, they, you can write with it. It's, it's, it's dark and it'll stain things. You can actually use it as ink. I know that because we took some when we were doing a squid dissection in college. Um, it, and we penetrated the ink sac and got it on our on our uh, little pointers that we were using in the dissection, and we wrote our names with it on the on the log cool. We wrote our names in squid ink. You have to have real fresh squid. The ones we do dissections with in this class, they aren't fresh. They still have ink. They still have ink, but it's all dried up. Um, so we'll do. Hopefully, we'll do a squid dissection. Um, the, uh, so this is a close look at the body of one of these organisms, and you can see um, this is the soft part that sits underneath the shell. This is showing a, a, a snail, but most, um, <laughs> most mollusks have all the same parts. So a lot of them have a mantle. That's this uh, this layer right here. The mantle is what secretes the shell. So the shell is there on top of the mantle. Um, a lot of them have a mouth with a scraping mouth part called a radula. The radula is like a like a tongue that has teeth on it. Imagine if your tongue had teeth all over it. <laughs> you could scrape something with it. Instead of, you could take your food and you wouldn't have teeth like a mouth, you'd have, the teeth would be on your tongue. So you, you'd scrape the food and that would be weird, but that's what your teeth do. 
<laughs> so they can take this, you can see it right there, this thing laying here and those little things coming off of it, those are the teeth. And it can stick that tongue out and scrape things with it. Most of these things are algae eaters. So you know algae like growing on the side of a fish tank? If you stick a snail in your fish tank, it'll lick the algae off the sides of the fish tank. So a lot of people have snails in their fish tank, so they don't have to clean the tank. What's that? Fish Mine, that Charlie? sticks to the side of the fish tank? Well, those are catfish, and they, they can also suck off algae. Oh, they're catfish? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. They're called Placostomus, is the scientific name, but yeah. They, they suck the algae off, so there's a lot of ways to get the algae off. One time I put two snails in my fish tank, and they were opposite sex. And they made it and had millions of baby snails. It was a nightmare. <laughs> it's good. Those things are real small, and they were everywhere. And I had to eventually drain the tank. Oh, yeah. It was no good. So be careful about putting male and female snails in the tank. Because they reproduce like crazy. Um, you can see it's got a full digestive system. We won't learn all these parts. You don't have to know all these parts. I'm talking about the important ones. They take in algae on this end after it scrapes the algae and it goes all the way through and they poop it out the other end. They have gills. That's an important part. All these organisms have gills. What happens is the water gets in here and, and touches the gills and the gills have blood in them that will absorb oxygen from the water. So all these things breathe with gills except for land snails. They have lungs. They've evolved lungs. But all, most of these uh, mollusks are underwater. They're not land. There's also slugs. Have you heard of slugs? They're on land. But most of these are underwater. Marine organisms. Uh, oh, a foot. you got to know the foot. The muscular foot. So they have a big foot that they move around on. And they can kind of shuffle the foot along and... And, and, and the snails will actually squirt out a mucus that the foot then slides on. So mucus comes out of cells in the foot and they'll slide along. Have you ever seen a snail trail? A mucus trail? So they squirt the mucus out from cells in the foot and then slide along it. That's pretty cool. But they're still slow moving. That's a, that's a picture of the radula. There's the radula of the snail. And most of these uh, mollusks have radulas. Like even a squid has one. It has a radula um, and it's got, it's evolved, squid have evolved a beak like structure around the radula that can grab fish. And then the radula kind of scrapes up the fish. Yeah, and uh, squid have killed people before. Be like yeah, it will be. Um, squid will attack. It'll attack divers and stuff. You gotta be careful with squid. How do they, they kill? They can get big. Giant squids can be as long as this room. So um, I don't think there's ever been a case of a giant squid attacking a person. But uh, this Humboldt squid. Have you ever heard of those? They get from 6 to 12 feet long, and they come in huge groups, and they'll attack anything. They'll, they'll attack people. They'll attack one another. Wait, how do they kill Sharks. them? With their radulas? Yeah, well, they'll, they'll spike you um, with their tentacles. Tentacles have little hooks on them, and they can hit you with a tentacle, and then pull like that, and the hooks all get you. And then they can pull you in, and, and then chew you up with their beaks and then scrape you with their radulas. <laughs> they can do it all. Wow. You don't want to mess with those things. <laughs> it's graphic. Yeah. Um, usually they won't attack people, but there's been a few cases. Usually. Um, <laughs> this is a baby mollusk. They have a larval stage. It's called a tropophore. And it's got a bunch of cilia there, and it swims around. This is microscopic. This is what we might see under the microscope when we're looking at the plankton. I don't know if anybody actually, does anyone remember, did, did you see anything like this? Uh, I don't know if any, some, some years we found them. That's a little microscopic mollusk. 
And I don't know what kind that could be. That could be a clam or an oyster or a scallop or a, uh, even um, a, uh, a baby um, squid. But at some point, they'll have a ring of cilia. And those cilia move around, and they move this thing someplace. And again, it's microscopic, and it'll settle someplace and can grow into the, the adult. We are looking larva. So you got to memorize and, and know the different groups of, um, of mollusks. So let's get some of this scientific nomenclature. Do you all remember domain, kingdom, phylum, order, did King Philip? Oops, I'm, I'm screwed up. I missed class. Domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Did King Philip come over from Germany slowly? Do you remember that? Y'all should know that from your basic biology. What domain are we talking about when we're talking about these things? Animals. No. Domain eukarya. Eukarya. Y'all should know this going into college biology. So, the do there's three domains. There's eukarya, there's bacteria, and there's archaea. We are, we and mollusks are eukarya. That means you have eukaryotic cells, cells with a nucleus. Y'all remember this stuff? Start going back to me. Yeah. Okay. Now, the kingdoms. Under eukarya, there are several different kingdoms. Do you know some of the kingdoms? Animalia. Animals, yeah, that's what we're in right now. Kingdom animals. And plants. There's also plants. Protista. There's fungi. Protista. And there's protista. protista. Um, under eukarya. So we're, we're talking about animals here. So under, that's the kingdom. So what phylums of animals are there? Well, we've already studied some of them. We studied phylum periphera. Remember that? That was the sponges. We studied phylum Cnidaria. You know what those were? They were the um, jellyfish. Jellyfish. Yeah. Jellyfish, Je sea anemones, coral, that sort of thing. The things with tentacles, with sting tentacles. Um, we just did several phylums of worms. Can you name any of the phylums of worms that we just studied? And the well, st stenophora are uh, are worms. But we did do that. No. Those are the um, the, the uh, jellies that have the, the comb jellies. What about? Okay, nematoda was a phylum. Those are the round worms. What about Annelida or something like that? Annelida, that's the segmented worms. Um, we did um, platy helminths. What were those? Flat worms. So there are several worm phylums that we studied. Um, but now we're studying um, mollusca. That's the mollusk. And under mollusca, there are uh, three groups you need to know. The gastropods, what's after phylum? Class. Class. The gastropods, the bivalves, and the cephalopods. It's actually cast <coughs> class gastropoda and class cephalopoda. So you need to kind of understand each phylum has groups under it. So this is the group gastropoda under phylum mollusca. Are y'all with me? It's a, it's a, it's a lot of uh, Latin terms and stuff to know, but if you learn them now, it helps you make sense of everything, the, kind of the place where everything goes as far as uh, order of evolution. So the gastropods are all uh, soft-bodied organisms with just one shell, like the conch. Have y'all ever found a conch shell somewhere? Yeah. That came from a, a, an organism that was living inside it. 
and who that made it. And do you notice when you look at a conch shell, it kind of spirals from the top? That's because those things started small. And as their body grows, they create more shell, and it gets bigger and bigger over time. So the biggest ones are the oldest ones. We also have whelk shells. Have y'all seen these? They're like conch shells. Hold on, I got some, I got some sample shells. Let me go get them. I'll pass them around. We got all kinds of shells. <coughs> This is the word. Alright. Coming through with shells. Excuse please. Oh. <laughs> Alright, so this right here is a uh, is a whelk. You know the difference between a whelk and a conch? Size. These little points. So a whelk has the points and a conch does not. And so you can see as it passes around, look how it spirals. They start real little with a tiny shell. And as they get bigger, they grow more shell and it spirals around over and over again. Have you ever looked inside and see them kind of hiding way down deep in there? Conk fritters. Conk you can get some conk fritters. Yeah, you can't really hear the ocean. This is a this is a cowrie shell. Have you ever seen oh, yeah, a cowrie before? Those. They I have beautiful shells. They're uh, they usually have all kinds of patterns on them that either help them attract mates or blend in or something like that. Cool. But uh, there's some cool cowrie shells. But that's related to a. It's a gastropod. It means it's a single-shelled mollusk. And, um, and then there's the nudibranchs are cool. They've evolved where they don't have a shell anymore. They've lost their shell through evolution. So it's like a conch or a whelk or a cowrie that has lost their shell. And so um, they're often called sea slugs. And they, uh, so if they don't have a shell, how do they protect themselves? Usually it's with poison. Did you click on it? The nudibranch? Yeah. I can, we can watch this video. Right you want to watch uh, this video? Oh, uh, yeah. Nudibranch video? No, I can't make it bigger here. So the C is sound, or the CH sound? Nudibranch. Yeah, it's called nudibranch. Nudibranch. Hold on. Sea slugs. And then, um, have y'all seen these periwinkle snails? 
They're on all the marsh grass around here. They well, the crawl up and down the marsh grass and they eat algae that's on the marsh grass. I don't want to. And they can, they are evolved, they're adapted to be able to survive the high salt levels that are on the marsh grass. I thought they were the ones and that made those holes. there's almost nothing that can live out there very easily, um, so these things do really well. What's that? I thought they were the ones that made those little holes, the, like little periwinkles. Holes in like, and, like shells. In, like of, when you walk down the beach and you see little holes, just like, they're like bubbling up, they got like bubbles coming up from it. Um, well, I don't know if that's the snails in those holes. Um, there are often the little worms we talk about, polychaete worms, and they can be shrimp too. So you can have a little ghost shrimp living in those things. You, maybe you can find some snails. Here, I have an extra credit project if you want to do it. Go out to the beach, take a shovel, and a, uh, a spaghetti, you know those things that you put spaghetti in and let the water run through? A strainer. Okay, a, what would you call it? A colander. Take a colander and a shovel. Go out to the beach and go at low tide and shovel and, 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 and go where there's, there's all those little holes and shovel up a big scoop. So you go down real deep and just put the dirt in the colander. And then take that colander into the ocean and just run it through the water so that all the sand runs out and you'll see whatever was living in those holes. And you'll see little polychaete worms. They, they're, they're not colored. They're this, kind of the same color as sand. Um, but you'll see them uh, after, you, after the sand runs out. And take a picture of that. Take a picture of you doing it. Take a picture of what you get in the colander. I'll give you 50 bonus points on a quiz. Make it a test and you got to deal. <laughs> All you got to do is take a picture, a little video, and send it to me or show it to me when you come to school today. Isn't that a good little project? This. What if we bring in you don't have to brain. do it if you don't want. What's that? What if we brought a new back in? You, you, you find a new to bring it in? If you can keep it alive, I'll also give you a new I'm going to go buy a new to bring it So the bivalves is classed by valvia here. And those are, um, those are organisms that have two shells. I happen to have a giant clam, not a giant clam, but a big, big clam shell here. And you can see it's got two shells. And um, these things are usually attached. They're strong muscles that hold the shell closed. And uh, these things are usually filter feeders. What they do is they dig into the bottom of the ocean, and they open their shells slightly, and they stick out a couple of siphons. And one pulls water in, and the other spits water out. And they filter feed the water of the plankton that's floating around in it. How come some of them have like the pearls and stuff? Have what? Okay, so a pearl can form in some kinds if they get a little sand grain in there. They want to protect themselves from the gritty sand grain because it kind of hurts their body. So they put a layer of uh, material around it that protects themselves from the sand grain. And that's what the pearl does. I'm not sure what it is. It, it might be made of the same stuff that forms their shells and some sort of calcium. You can probably look up what's a pearl made of. You can probably Google that. Why don't somebody Google that and find out? But anyway, um, uh, anything that has two shells is a bivalve. Clams, oysters, mussels. You ever like to eat mussels? Oh, yeah. Scallops. Um, if you have two shells, you're bivalvia. Again, when this clam dies, the shells uh, can wash up somewhere, and there's nothing in it. And a lot of uh, a lot of organisms eat these things. You can uh, some organisms. There are snails that will drill a hole into the shell and, and eat the thing right in its shell, and then the shell will just be left there. Um, there are uh, uh, starfish can can grab the side. They're so strong they can just pull the shell open, and then they uh, they eat the thing right there. Um, and uh, there are um, sea turtles. A sea turtle's jaw is so strong it can just bite right through the shell. Just chew <laughs> up the shell like it's like it's nothing, and spit out the shell and swallow that. And that's what sea turtles do all day. They have a real strong jaw. So these things, just because they have a shell, doesn't mean they're impervious. They can be eaten by things. Video footage. Oh yeah.
In books and movies, they are monsters of the deep, with massive jaws waiting to trap an unwary diver and drag them to their doom. True to their name, giant clams are the largest of their kind, with shells over four feet long. But they're hardly dangerous. In fact, there's never been a reported death by clam. Life as a giant clam is rather peaceful. They live in coral reefs in the warm, shallow waters of the Pacific Ocean. With shells wide open, they bask in the sunlight. Each clam has a set of unique colored patterns on its skin. Just under its skin is its silent partner, an algae colony. In this symbiotic relationship, the clam provides the algae with protection in exchange for skimming a little algae off the top for a midnight snack. Never want to pass up a free meal, the giant clams also filter feed on plankton, using their siphons to draw water in and out over their gills. But they don't want to become food themselves. Scattered across their skin are hundreds of tiny eyes. With them, it can sense shadows overhead. Any sudden change, and the clam is closed for business, although never fast enough to put a person out of commission. In fact, the way most people are hurt by giant clams is by trying to pick them up. They can weigh a monstrous 500 pounds. Yeah, a little lighter underwater. And then finally you have your cephalopods. Class cephalopoda. Like the octopus and the squid and the cuttlefish and the nautilus, a lot of these have lost their shells. So they don't have shells and they have to have, they found, they've evolved other ways to survive. They, uh, most of them have little uh, cells in their skin called chromatophores that can change colors. And they can change colors instantly. And it helps them camouflage themselves. And it helps them communicate. They'll communicate to one another by flashing colors and such. It's amazing how these things can do it. This is one of the coolest videos you'll ever see, if you haven't seen it, on octopus camouflage. And these things, well, I'll let you watch it. Here. I don't know. Octopus or cephalopod, you need to really understand how to use your surroundings to hide. In the next scene, you're going to see a nice coral bottom. And you see that an octopus would stand out very easily there if you couldn't use your camouflage, use your skin to change color and texture. Here's some algae in the foreground. And an octopus. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Now, Roger spooked him, so he took off a cloud of ink, lands, and when he lands, the octopus says, look, I've been seeing, best thing to do is get as big as I can get. How do you chase him? That big brown makes his eye spot very big. So he's bluffing. Let's do it backwards. I thought he was joking when he first showed it. So I thought it was all graphics. So here, here it is in reverse. Watch the skin color. Watch the skin texture. Just an amazing animal. Can change color and texture to match the surroundings. Watch him blend right into this algae. One, two, three. And now he's on the all line. Thank you very much. That's all he did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that chase, but I don't want these. <laughs> I don't want them. Oh, man. Oh, man.